Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, as a software developer, do you get bored by using the same framework and tools over and over and over again? So let's get into it. Now this is a juicy one. This is a good one. This is a really good one. Do I get bored by doing the same thing over and over and over again? I wouldn't even open it up so far as to say that this touches on something that I don't think a lot of people really in, in engineering and software development overall, I don't think they really want to admit this. I will make a statement and I'm okay with that this be this possibly being something that people don't want to agree to. Hopefully you're gr grown up enough to admit if you've done this because I know I have. Sometimes and Sometimes it goes so far that it starts a trend. There are these developers who have this problem. They are simply bored. They have a way of doing something. It has been doing this for a long, long time. And this way of working, it's working up. There's no, nothing wrong with it. There is really little in terms of improvements that can be done, but it's just so... It's so boring, right? So they invent a... They, they get inspired. These people, they get inspired by something out there. It's functional programming, immutable state, or something like that. And then they decide that now I'm going to apply these, these best practices to this way of working because I think that this is going to make things better. That's the key word here. Better. And I will... I should start paying my old coworker Mark for this because his state, I, I hated him for a little bit because I was a front-end developer back in those days. But uh, when he, he stated that one of the biggest front problems with front-end developers is that they mistake progress for change or change for progress, something like that. And he is, I just keep on seeing more and more examples of him being correct about this. I see these uh, people who basically just they create all these different libraries with almost no added value. It's almost non-existent value. They claim that there is a lot of value, but when I look at it, I, I know, I mean, I, I can see what the, the problem they're solving. I can understand the problems that I have and when I work and I know what my, you know, what most people face when they're solving these problems. And I can see that this is just, oh, well, there is some value, but it really only looks like you've been bored, dude. That's what it looks like. It looks like you have been bored because the, the cost value ratio is completely off. If you're especially in front end, this is what I absolutely love this. This is my absolute favorite thing in the world to criticize people about. If I'm, I'm not usually criti criticizing people, they really have to invite me and poke me and like push me to, uh, until I finally just admit that I kind of think it's weird that you create a library that does this point, almost pointless little, little thing. And that just adds a bunch of extra code to a application where the idea, because the goal of front-end development is to do it with the least amount of code. It's been proven over and over and over again how critical it is that you have the least amount of assets going to the client, because that includes your page load time. You should do everything you can to get that, as, that number as low as possible. And there are two proven ways to do that more effectively than anything else. And that is number one, reduce the amount of HTTP requests. In other words, the fewer requests you can make, the better. Second, the le less stuff you have going over the wire, the better. Those are the most proven things, everybody. But it's kind of funny because these people usually don't, it seems that they don't really care about this because, you know, we have code splitting and we have lazy loading. Uh, yeah, and I kind of go, yeah, we do. But wouldn't it be amazing if we started by just being a little bit conservative about what we add in and really think about what we're adding in. Because honestly, I can, I'm, I can admit to you guys that I have more than once added a library because I thought it was cool. I have more than once built my own implementation of something completely, just, just made my own project because I thought it was cool. I convinced myself that it was going to be the best thing ever and I was going to use it all the time. Built the thing, shipped it, it was just for me, never used it again, ever. 
I've been there before. I mean, if uh, this is something that happens to everybody sooner or later, unless you really don't care about what you're doing. If you never get bored, more power to you, you should definitely start thinking about working for the banking world or something like that, where the like where most developers who can't handle this, like, they can't stay there. But for sure, I can promise you that I have more than once switched the framework or tried like tried something different. I mean, just because I'm bored with the stuff that I do every day. I would like to think though that I am I have gotten better at this. I, just a few like maybe two years ago, ish, something like that. I was a true cul culprit of this, and it I. In many ways, I'm actually a little bit sorry that, I mean, maybe I'm putting too much uh, on myself because at that time I was really, really junior. But I feel, I feel a little bit, I still feel a little bit bad over putting some of my coworkers through this where, you know, I suppose you want to, I wished I had more experience earlier in my career so I didn't force somebody through these mistakes that I, I could have somehow thought, figured out that the problem isn't that I'm, I, I, what I'm trying to solve is not really a problem. I'm just doing it because I want to do it. Though I will raise my finger and I will say that by the end of that entire little endeavor, I feel like I actually did learn enough to, well, I brought those learnings with me into my company today and it's kind of funny because today it seems that it's more valuable than ever because I'm surrounded by these people uh, where and I mean I understand it and we talk about it I mean some ideas are really good you shouldn't just dismiss things I mean not everybody is suggesting a new tool just because they're bored with the thing that they have but it does happen it does happen a lot and that's where I think that one of the biggest virtues and the thing that I think you should take away from this is that it's hard to check yourself, but I really think that you should have a a Q and A session whenever every somebody says suggests, "Hey, we're going to use a new framework. We're going to use another library." Start by asking, "Okay, what is the value of this?" That's the first thing because what's going to happen is that you're going to get a sales pitch. You're going to give yourself a sales pitch as well if you if it's yourself if you you yourself are making this mistake. So just get those things out of the way first. And when all the pros are listed, force yourself to think about the consequences. Because if you have, if you can't have, if you have no consequences, then you're on the hype train. I promise you, you are on the hype train if there are no consequences with your actions. There's always a pro and a con, always. And the third and last thing, which is probably the most important thing, is to ask yourself how much better like what is actually going to change if you make this migration you change this framework you change this tool what is actually going to be improved what measurable value are you going to get and you are you know you're in the danger zone if your answer is it's just going to make things cleaner it's going to make us more productive it's going to make things fa these things are indications that there's a subjective value here so be careful. That's all I'm going to say. Have a great day.